So for all of those people out there that may scarcely understand Bitcoin or half the things we're talking about here, can we walk through how, you know, we say this a lot in Bitcoin circles, Bitcoin fixes that or Bitcoin fixes this because it's hard to find a problem that Bitcoin doesn't at least marginally contribute to its solution. But can you describe how, like all, like, I think you've laid out a pretty vicious case against the existing financial system. How is it that Bitcoin shatters that, reforms that, changes it's that? It's the tip of the that? sword. Yeah. It's all, and then it's, it's, it's like almost so hokey. I, 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 I like want to err on not even saying it, but <laughs> it leads by example. Mm -hmm. And the more you dive in, once you really grasp the freedom of the technology, right? Then I, what, 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 when I found it, found it, right? It was round one epiphany, mm -hmm. round two epiphany, round three mm -hmm. epiphany, right? And round one epiphany was like, I can hold this in a hard drive. I don't have to pay a broker. I don't have to pay property tax. This is an asset. I don't have to pay a warehouse to store the gold. Like if I wanted to hold bricks of gold that are more than what I can handle at my house. Um, and I just thought it was brilliant because it solved for one of the things that has bothered me about our societal construct forever, which is property tax. It, it is crippling to think about if I, I saved a million dollars and I'm going to buy a home, I'm going to pay a, in and out realtor three, six percent, whatever mm -hmm. the commission is. Then the title company gets a point. Then d title doc stamps, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Then an appraisalist, and then and then I got to pay every year for the entirety of the ownership. Right. And I'm not saying I don't support roads and schools. Levy me on those specifically. I'll pay you ten times what mm -hmm. you think you're, you you could get from me. Mm -hmm. But that forced made me realize that hey, I don't know what it's going to be worth in fiat. But guess what, Robert? I don't care because I know fiat's going to zero. <laughs> it, is, it is the weirdest thing as a professional investor to look at something and not measure it in performance in the way that we're supposed to. Right. Now, of course, the, the, I have to comply with that because that, that's a benchmark. Just like you're, you, you measure your doctor's success on how healthy you are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there has to be some way to have a scorecard as a professional investor and even as, as a investor who invests in professional investors. But personally, it's immaterial. No. Because all we're doing is transferring something we know is going to go to zero into something that is, is finite, has the best construct of any asset ever in all of mankind's history. And where, where Epiphany 3 occurred, was when ch the China ban disrupted and diversified the mining infrastructure mm -hmm. and reduced the probability of the 51% attack to mm -hmm. almost nothing. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, all right, I'm all in. <laughs> After already being one version of all in, then it was like, oh, I'm going to quadruple down. Yeah. Um, and, and then the faith and security brings me and my family. My wife is Colombian. She's seen, I mean, South right. Americans that are even our age, around 35, 40 years they get old. It. They've already seen wealth being confiscated two, three times in Argentina the last 11 years, Colombia, Venezuela, Chile, Peru, most recently. She, do you think she wants the money in the bank? Huh. This isn't rocket science. Right. So if it, if it satisfies that fear and anxiety, if it absolves my own fear and anxiety of having to deal with all the taxation and property taxes by just trying to be successful and be mm -hmm. a good human, I don't see anything that could lead me to be negative on it. Right. What is it like? Because I guess the most challenging thing about being in Bitcoin is trying to describe the future that we think it could usher in because we've literally never seen anything like this before. Right. Like there's sort of these proxy examples. The Gilded Age is a great one. Right. We're on the gold standard, a functional gold standard for a brief period of time. There was a lot of flourishing of, you know, art, um, cooperation low and predictable taxes, gold flows around the world sort of kept governments in check. Mm -hmm. So we have like these little siloed versions of what it could look like, like almost looking at these instances of the successful gold standard as like a monetary prism of what a Bitcoin standard could look like. Mm -hmm. But where does, what in your mind does it look like? What, how do you describe like what it, does government remain post Bitcoin standard? And if so, what taxes are they collecting? What, what are they at that point? You know, it's, I, I, I said at the beginning, it's a, it's an 
error for man to try and predict. Um, <laughs> I'm not good at that. I, I'm I'm good at quantitative mathematics, which yeah. give you, you know, a linear regression prediction of yeah. price expectation, but that's you know limits of the equations themselves. Sure. I, you know, I think you've you've got you've always had an ebb and flow of centralized authority mm -hmm. and decentralized authority. Yeah. Um, on one end of the spectrum, you know, what's very wrong with crypto as an asset class in a community is you have hucksters in here, just like Wall Street. Oh, yeah. You've got shit coins. You've got bullshit projects that aren't trying to improve any aspect of humanity. And there's so much sector approach to be taken with crypto, and there's some, some great ones. But there's still a lot of crap that muddies the water for solid projects that are trying to further mankind advancement and innovation and and then bitcoin as the anchor to all of it mm -hmm. and you know so I, I would argue that you're never going to find perfection mm -hmm. it, it's just can we put a construct in place which, which is not we didn't put in place it's in the code mm -hmm. that balances the instinctual coercion corruption and greed that is mm -hmm. inherent to all mankind um like one of the things that i'm i'm very vocal about in the community, and, and I think you've heard me say this, I am not for the synthetics and the over-financialization of the cryptocurrency market mm -hmm. at all, especially Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And you can argue it from many perspectives. I am a futures principal. I, I love commodities. Uh, we could get into why commodity investments are kept from the public. That's a whole nother, mm -hmm. whole nother uh, can of worms. But re realistically, if we look at it as I'm a miner, and I'm, I'm a bona fide hedger, I need to hedge my receivables. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a noble reason for hedging instruments to exist. Mm -hmm. Here's a way to stop the manipulation. A one-to-one -one ratio. So nothing naked, no, no, no 160, 300 to one, none of that. One-to-one right. -one ratio. And you have options and futures that are in-kind settlement. So you keep the root collateral as the underlying right and that what that limits it to is what i don't call manipulation is if i've got a billion and you have a million you're going to trade long i'm going to trade short my size is going to push you out of the way right i'm not manipulating it because of why because right. i'm taking risk with my capital yes right so if we remove a synthetic from it right then we have a healthy market for hedging right. for those who require it and a healthy market for those passive long-term investors. And again, to try and simplify that, it's all you're saying is the representation should match the reality, Correct. right? That so is no lies, no deception, basically. 